Okie dokie. So we had just made this line graph um, in the last video. And remember I did this by grabbing the frequencies, insert line graph. And I picked this one right here, the line with markers and the um, far left. Okay. And if you don't want the markers, if you don't want the dots, then pick the one above that. I personally like having the dots in there. Okay. So I had deleted the legend and now I'm going to make this, um, this is frequency polygon of quiz grades, I think this is, or maybe it was exam grades. Oh, it must be exam grades. Look at, look at how big those numbers are. Okay, so there's that. All right, and this is looking really good. The only problem is that the horizontal axis isn't really quite what we want. Oh, and we need labels probably. All right, so let's go to the layout tab. We want the horizontal axis to be exam grades. We want the vertical axis to be frequency. And then I just need to change these horizontal axis labels so that they're what we want. Just like with a histogram, you kind of right click on, click and then right click on one of the dots or one of the line segments, whatever. So you can see that all of them are highlighted and you go to select data. And you want the horizontal category axis labels to be different, so you go to edit and you want to put in the midpoints right there. Don't grab the word midpoint. That'll make the first thing be midpoints, which isn't what you want. So grab 40 through 100 and say OK. And you can see right there, 40 is the first one. Cool. We're all done. We made a frequency polygon. All right, then they want you to do it again, but for a relative frequency polygon. Well, that's not too bad. Um, you can do the cheating way. You could do everything we just did, but grab relative frequency instead. Oops, don't do that. All right, so grab those, go to insert, pick line graph, and then edit it all. Or you can copy and paste. So I clicked on the graph, I copied, and then I pasted somewhere else. And let me label this. This is relative frequency. And then I'll change this to relative frequency. And then I want it to be different colors. So I'm going to go to design and make it green. And there we go. And I can move it around, do whatever I want. We're done. We did those with Excel. Not too bad, are they? Now, what were the numbers that are on the horizontal axis here? Those are the midpoints. I should be clear, by the way, that when I make these graphs, um, there are other ways to do this. There's usually more fussing around you can do in Excel. I'm just showing you kind of the bare bones of how to make a polygon, but you can get fancier, like try to get more tick marks in it and stuff like that. But we're not doing that. Now, what was the main difference between the two graphs that we made? So. Um, we have this graph right here, which apparently I made red on the, there you go. So I have the red one, I've got the green one. And there's really not a lot of difference, right? Oh, whoops, I totally made a mistake. Why didn't you stop me? This is supposed to be relative frequency, right? When I copy and paste it, I forgot. You just drag this over. So you kind of make it so it's that four-sided arrow on the edge of the box. And click down with your left mouse button and drag it to the right. And then boom, they're relative frequency. Now they're different. That was a total mistake. You guys should have stopped me. Just kidding. All right, so um, it's a relative frequency graph, so it uses decimals as opposed to the frequency graph, which uses whole numbers. That's really basically the big difference. So let me, let me type that up. I'll pause you. Hold on. There we go. So the frequency polygon uses, um, obviously, frequency for the vertical axis, but that means it's using whole number counts of how many students or people or whatever are in the class. Um, whereas down here in the relative frequency graph, it's using the decimals, the percents, um, to figure out how many. So when you look at this, you can see, you know, oh, about 15% scored in this around 60 range. So somewhere like from 55 to 65, that kind of thing. Alrighty. What about cumulative frequency? Okay, well, to make a cumulative frequency distribution, you accumulate the frequencies or accumulate the relative frequencies over time. So let's start with cumulative frequency. So the frequency for the first class is 2. No trouble. But I want to accumulate down the column. So the frequency for the next class is 2 plus 2, which makes 4. And now the next one is 2 plus 2 plus 7, which makes 11. And then 24 then 35, then 46, and then 50. And notice that by the end, you should have the same number as what the total for the frequency column is. 